All right, well, I think we are ready to get started. So hello, everyone. My name is Lauren. Hello. Thank you so much for having me today. I am the nutritionist over at the Foxboro YMCA. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one nutrition consults, nutrition workshops, grocery store tours, and I run a 10-week healthy lifestyle program over there at the YMCA. So today, I kind of want to talk to you guys about the basics of healthy eating. It is the new year, so people are excited about healthy eating, which is great. Um, one thing about the new year is I find a lot of people are doing fad diets and a lot of not so really healthy diets. So I, I more promote um, a healthy lifestyle, so that's what I'm going to talk a lot about today. And I also want to open this up as kind of like a question and answer type of thing. So any questions at all, just shout it out and I would be happy to answer it. So, like I said, simple and healthy lifestyle changes make a really big difference. So I'm sure you guys have heard of like the paleo diet or the Whole30. And a lot of these things seem tempting because they promise short a lot of weight loss in a short period of time which is tempting but it's not always the safest way to go you know and if you're looking to lose weight you want to lose weight at a slow and steady pace rather than a lot of weight at once because then it is more likely to put that weight on quickly so one thing that I talk about a lot is looking at the nutrition facts label and the ingredient list. Most people will just look at the nutrition facts label, which is important. It's important to see how many grams of sugar or grams of fiber are in a certain product. But what about the ingredients? What do you guys think? Do you look at the ingredient list often or the nutrition facts label more? Both. Both? Both. Awesome. So when you're looking at the ingredients, what are some things that you're keeping your eye out for? Sugar. Sugar? Whole oh, sodiums. Oh, yes, whole grains, sodium. Yes, that's a good one. Sneaky sugars. Sneaky sugars, absolutely, because we don't know how much sugar in a product, if you're looking and you see that there's 10 grams of sugar, is that naturally occurring sugar for, from something like lactose, if it, you're looking at a dairy product, or is that added sugar from like sucrose or glucose? Those are the sugars you wanna, really want to look out for. So that's really good. Um, my plate is one of my favorite ways to kind of think about healthy eating and help you build your meals. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a couple of slides. So as I said, a healthy diet really does not require fasting. You never want to deprive yourself. Something that I see often is if people come to see me and they say that they want to lose weight and they're eating about a thousand calories a day, that is not good. It's really important to make sure you are eating enough eating not eating enough is just as bad as eating too much so you really want to make sure you're eating every four to six hours or so to keep your metabolism up and running it's really important to do that focusing on fiber that's something we could all use more of we all know the importance of fruits veggies and whole grains but we could all use a little bit more of that Obviously, physical activity is very important. At least 30 minutes of some sort of cardio and strength training um, five times a, a week is really ideal. We obviously don't want to be hungry. You want to make sure it's sustainable. And if you're always hungry, it's not really a, a good diet. And you never want to eliminate major food groups. So I'm sure you guys have heard of like the low carb diet or the no carb diet, which is just ridiculous because carbs are what give you long lasting energy. It's really important that you have enough carbs. So now this is the my plate plan that I mentioned. Who's familiar with this? Oh, a couple of you, good. So I'm sure you guys remember the old food pyramid with all of the carbs at the bottom and the sugars, the salts, the oils up at top. We no longer use that food pyramid. We use this my plate plan instead. So I think it's a better way to think about healthy eating because it's a good visual. So ideally you wanna make half your plate fruits and veggies whenever possible. You wanna have at least half of your grains be whole grains and you want a little bit of protein at each meal. A couple servings of dairy throughout the day is a good thing as well. Who here would say that their meals look like this? Yeah, see, it's something that we all t tend to struggle with. We know what we should be doing, but it's hard to put it into practice. So we'll talk a little bit about that, too. <laughs> so whole grains. We know that whole grains are packed with fiber. Fiber is extremely important to help to keep us fuller for longer. 
what we recommend is that at least half of your grains are whole grains. So whole grains include brown rice, quinoa, millet, buckwheat, oatmeal, popcorn, things like that are really the kind of grains that we want to be choosing. When thinking about breads, for example, um, they have white bread out there. That's, it's more simple sugars, it has a lot of empty calories, and it's been processed to remove all of the nutrients. So there's not as much fiber, there's not any B vitamins. You're gonna find that in the actual whole grain product. So think always think whole grain. When you're looking at bread, as I mentioned, you wanna make sure it's 100% whole wheat. Bread is one of those things that can be kind of deceiving in the grocery store. So you might see like a wheat bread, but then you look back in the ingredient list and you see that the first ingredient is enriched wheat flour. That is not whole grain. You want 100% whole grain as your first ingredient. That's why it's very important to look. What was that? Well, I was gonna ask you that because the last time I got whole wheat, it the whole wheat wasn't to like six things down. Yes, and that's, it's kind of deceiving how they Makes do sense. that. Absolutely, so it's probably, that bread was made with whole grains, it wasn't a whole grain. But I'm glad you brought that up because the first ingredient on the ingredient list is the ingredient that's in the product the most, so that's why you always want to look at that ingredient list. So if you're thinking about work, workouts, pre and post workout snacks, what whole grains do is they give you that long lasting energy. So you always wanna have carbs before a workout. So maybe that's a slice of whole grain toast, or maybe it is uh, some Air Pops popcorn, brown rice, anything along those lines before workout is ideal to keep your blood sugar levels steady and to keep you feeling full. So fruits and veggies, we all know that we could be using more of these. We wanna to try to get at least five servings a day, but that can be hard sometimes. So here are a couple tips and tricks on to how to get more veggies into your diet. One of my favorite things that I've been recently starting to do is spiralizing veggies. Has anyone ever done that with the spiralizer? Yeah, what have you done? Um, the spaghetti, uh, like spaghetti squash or the um, zucchini. That's my favorite thing to do. So I'll take some zucchini, I'll spiralize it, and I'll saute it with a little bit of olive oil, and then just pair it with shrimp, and it's delicious. Yes. It's actually being offered in uh, produce departments of grocery stores now. Big Y has a choice of the zucchini and um, a couple of others. And I have seen that. Water. I think that's awesome. So if you don't want to buy a spiralizer, just getting that at the produce section, I think is awesome. It's just a fun way to switch it up rather than you know, traditional spaghetti to have something that is so high in nutrients and with not a lot of calories too. That's a really good way to get those calories, I mean, to get that nutrition in. <coughs> what about the riced veggies? Anyone tried that? Like rice cauliflower? You've yeah. tried that? Yeah. What have you guys like done it. with that? I like it. I didn't, I'm not a big cauliflower lover, but I like to uh, make the rice um, cauliflower and put in a little onion flavoring in. That's it's awesome. It is good. I feel like people are, they think, oh, cauliflower, it might not be too good, but it's delicious. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, saw a program sure. the other day that used rice cauliflower and pulverized it and used it for a crust for pizza. Yep. I have done that before and it's delicious. I made chicken fried rice the other night with cauliflower rice and the mouthfeel is just like rice. I know, you could really trick mm -hmm. kids into yeah, eating great. the fried rice yeah. with the veggies. Can you have the rice with veggies? Or can you buy no, it you that You can way? buy it that way. Now. You can't. Yeah, yeah, it's like the spiralized okay. vegetables. They're okay. getting so popular mm -hmm. that the stores are, Trader Joe's yeah. has it all the time. Yeah. They have cauliflower yeah. mashed potatoes too. That I knew, yeah, yeah but I didn't realize so, about so the rice. Right. Why would you have rice veggies instead of rice. Just to get more veggies into your diet. So what I might do if I want to make sure that I'm getting those whole grains in, I might do half of the cauliflower rice and then half of brown rice. Mm -hmm. And then still get those veggies in, throw a protein on top, and it's a great complete meal. Now is brown rice, is uh, wild rice, is that a whole? It is, that's a great question. Besides being really expensive. Yeah. I know yeah. it is very expensive, but it's delicious. <laughs> Yeah. So someone over here mentioned that you can buy the fried, uh, the cauliflower rice at Trader Joe's. They have it in the frozen and the fresh section. So if you know that you're not going to be eating it for a while, getting it fr frozen is a good idea. So definitely try to experiment with things like that because we do want to make sure we are getting enough fruits and veggies into our diets. What about baking fruit? Has anyone tried that? Baking apples, You've tried that back there? Awesome. Baking it with a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, nutmeg. I haven't done that, but that's a great way to make sure that you're getting a lot of fiber in as well. What about smoothies? 
I love smoothies. What do I you do? Strawberry banana smoothies. I think that is such a great way to start the day um, because we all know that we should be having lots of fruits and veggies, but most of us don't get our recommended five servings a day. If you have a smoothie, if you start your day off with a great banana, strawberry banana smoothie, maybe you throw a cup of spinach in there, that's three servings of fruit the first thing of your of your day. So it's a really good way to start the day. Could you do it at the end and still get the same thing? Because that's what I do. I have it like, just, it's my dessert. Awesome. You know, and I eat it with a spoon like it was ice cream or, you know, it's tricking myself. So. That's great. If that's working for you, I think that's awesome. That's a great way to get a lot of things in. I like to do smoothies with Greek yogurt in the morning if I need a little bit of protein. Um, and I always throw those greens in there because if you put berries in your smoothie, it kind of masks the flavor of the greens and you're still going to get a lot of nutrition. So something to consider, absolutely. Question, on, on the Greek yogurt, does it matter what yogurt you get, whether it's non-fat, low-fat, or... That is such a great question. So it's kind of a hot topic in nutrition right now. Some people are saying that full fat is the way to go because there is less ingredients, there's less sugar in that, and the fat in the yogurt is what keeps you full. However, a lot of people that are used to 2% or low fat milk or yogurts, making that transition is really hard and they don't like the taste. So my thought on that is do what works best for you. Um, there's nothing wrong with the skim milk by any means, the skim milk yogurt or the reduced fat yogurts. Um, it, it, you're still gonna get the same amount of protein, you're gonna get calcium, so it's really what works best for you. If you decide on the full fat ones, you just have to take those calories into consideration. Mm -hmm. It is going to be more calories, more grams of saturated saturated fat, but if you're finding it keeps you fuller for longer, might not be a bad option to consider. Weight Watchers has just revamped their program. It's I heard. Free style. Yeah. Fat free yogurt is zero points. Wow. I'm almost kind of pushing it, you know, you know what I'm saying? So if you, I used to like the 2% for that exact reason because yeah. it was more filling, but now if I'm going to eat it and it's zero points, I head that direction. You know? I know, and that's where it gets a little tricky. Nutrition is yeah. one of those things where there's lots of different philosophies and ideas out there, but I would really say if the 2% is keeping you fuller and you enjoy it more, then you should stick with that. Yeah, I like that too. It has a little bit more taste and flavor. Good question. Okay, so protein. Everyone thinks protein, we need so much protein, when really we don't need that much protein. Protein should only be about 20% of your daily calories. Everyone is always shocked to hear that, but what we really need more of is carbs. Remember, fruits and veggies are carbs, so if we're making half our plate fruits and veggies whenever possible, it makes sense that 50% of those daily calories should come from carbs. So having a little bit of protein at every meal isn't a bad idea because it will help to keep you fuller. You always want to try to get all of those food groups at your meals, um, but you don't need crazy amounts of it. So protein powders and supplements, all of that stuff, unless you're a bodybuilder and you're doing crazy amounts of exercise, that's one thing, but for the average person, you don't need a lot of protein. So a couple of different plant sources of protein that we could all benefit from eating are beans and lentils, nuts and seeds and nut butters, things like that are a really nutritious way to get good protein in. One thing that I like to do is I, I'll do like a meatless Monday just to ensure that I'm doing, getting a lot of fruits and veggies in and just overall healthier lifestyle. Anyone here try beans and lentils as their protein source at meals? Good. You guys do that? Good. They're really good in a soup. Um, it's just a good way to get good protein in. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is there a good turkey bacon out there? Hmm. Not really. I haven't found <laughs> that. No. <laughs> I mean, I've tried and tried, but you know, they don't come close. <laughs> I have to say, I've tried a couple of turkey bacons myself, and I'm not really a big fan. And actually, if you look at the ingredients, turkey bacon versus regular bacon, the sodium, that's pretty similar. It's the saturated fat that is a little bit lower. So if you're struggling to find a turkey bacon that you're enjoying, I would say have the real bacon, but just really stick, watch that portion, have less of it. Okay. If you're really going to find more enjoyment in the regular bacon, I have that. Turkey bacon, unfortunately, I haven't had a good one that tastes we were, very good. We were coming back from retreat and somebody served turkey bacon and we Googled turkey bacon versus real bacon. 
the description of turkey bacon <laughs> was enough to put you off. Mechanically separated mm. turkey meat. That's okay. Um, <laughs> the, with, with the trace elements in the real bacon, real bacon's actually better for you than it's healthier. It's healthier for you, yes. And that's a great point. So there's so many different diet foods, and I kind of consider turkey bacon as one of those diet foods that we think might be healthy because it sounds healthier. Then once we dissect that ingredient list, we hear things like that, and it, it's, it's not real food. We really want to stick to real wholesome food. When you're looking at the ingredient list, make sure there's not crazy amounts of ingredients in there, and the ingredients that are in a product, you know, <laughs> and you know what you're eating. It's just a healthier approach. I'm glad you brought that up, good question. So what we are limiting each day, obviously we wanna limit our sodium. However, if you guys are eating a healthy, balanced diet of real food rather than not a lot of processed food, sodium's not really a big concern. Sodium is found in a lot of packaged foods. So think the middle of the grocery store. That's where you find all your packaged foods. If you shop the perimeter of the grocery store, you'll see the produce section, you'll see the meat department, dairy, all of the departments. That's the real food. It's the middle of the store that is not always the healthiest foods. So we wanna to limit to about 2,300 milligrams a day. We do wanna limit our saturated fats, added sugars. Now this is a really important topic too because as, of, as I mentioned about the yogurts, if you guys are looking at a nutrition facts label and of a yogurt for instance, and you see that there's 10 grams of sugar, we don't know how many grams of sugar are natural or how many are added. This year, I don't know if you know this, yeah, they're changing it, which I'm so excited about. So we're actually going to be able to see how many grams of sugar in a product are natural and how many are added. And I think that's really important because things like yogurt and things like fruits, fruits do have a lot of sugar, but fruits also have fiber, vitamins, minerals that are so important. So it's not really the natural sugar we should be watching, it's the added sugar. So I think once that new food label comes out, it's gonna be a little bit easy for us, easier for us to figure that out. Your last item in your list, when I found out about that, it really hit me hard because I, I analyzed like a glass of orange juice with 28 grams of sugar. It's seven teaspoons of sugar. I know. I gave up yeah. orange juice mm -hmm. and went to V8. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very striking figure. And I think if, if, if we have that correlation, because fruit flavored yogurt is so high. In oh, yeah. I'll, I'll put fruit in my plain yogurt. But it's like 18 grams of yeah. sugar. It's I crazy. know. Once you think about it and, and you, you visualize it's healthy, it. It's really not. Right. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah, but I did. I, when I was in college, I did this ex kind of a presentation about how much sugar is in soda and juices, and I had to measure out how with a teaspoon and then show people, and they were blown away. It's amazing. It really is. Once you see it, so just really start to think about that. Look at the nutrition facts label. See how much sugar is in there, and think about four grams is one teaspoon. That's incredible. But it, or, some of the sugar in orange juice is natural. It is, that's so right. Do you know how much is added? I don't. It, some of them are going to be different, too. Yeah. So I know. We'll be able to know soon. Yes, we will, which is very exciting. The, um, I had to take a, a nutrition course as part of an alcohol uh, counseling course I was taking, and the professor was quite up front. He said, Unless you're drinking real, real pulped orange juice, you are drinking flavored sugar water, mm -hmm. colored sugar water. The uh, flavonoids or the trace elements that are in the fiber that are in the orange pulp is what makes your citrus fruits nutritious. That's mm -hmm. why they, they'll tell you eat a whole, you know, eat right. real grapefruit, yes. or right. eat exactly. real orange. Exactly. The sugars are bound in the fiber. Exactly. In the pulp. Yes, and then once it turns into a juice, all the fiber and is you, gone. And you, and you strain the fiber out. 90% of the orange juice shown is strained. It's pulpless. It's, it's colored sugar water. Absolutely. That's a really good point. And I like that you said have the actual orange rather than the orange juice because that's where you're going to find more nutrition and fiber.
in the new Weight Watchers program, the freestyle program, the yeah. leader was just telling us the other day that if you eat, say, an orange, it's zero points. But if you change that orange and you decide to have the same amount in orange juice, it's two, three, or four points depending upon the maker. Wow. So that's a, a big difference. Absolutely. It makes you think. So eat everything that you can natu in the natural form. Yeah. So we're thinking about that for fruit, but I also want you guys to think about that for all food products too, you know? Um, you re the food that's in their most natural form is better off. Less processed is the way to go. So really good points. I've just been looking into the Medita Mediterranean diet. Awesome. Cause for heart issues, and um, that's what it says. It says if it looks like it's been in a factory, avoid it. I couldn't agree more. I guess I'd really avoid turkey bacon. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I think it's kind of hard now too, this in this day and age, because there are so many processed foods out there. It makes it more challenging to eat healthy and have a more wholesome diet. But my number one tip is really shopping the perimeter of the store. It really makes such a difference. All good points. So one thing that I already touched upon, but I did want to touch upon it again, is pre and post workout snacks. So like I said, before workout, very, very important to have those carbs to keep your energy levels steady, to keep you energized, very important. It's really important not to work out on an empty stomach. Does anyone ever do that? Once. I have been lately, just because <laughs> yoga and Pilates are really hard to do that downward facing dog on a full stomach. Yes, you ideally want to eat about an hour and a half prior to ex exercising um, because you don't want to yeah. feel like yeah. that. But if you're exercising with something, sm even something small in your stomach, you are more likely to, to burn fat as opposed to burning muscle. So if you work out, you're doing some cardio or Pilates, whatever it may be, and you don't have anything in your belly, you're more likely to burn muscle. We don't want that. You know, we want to make sure we have enough muscle on our body. So it's really important to try to have something small before you exercise. A lot of people will say to me, well, I can't have anything before I exercise. I'm exercising at 6 a.m. and if I eat, I'm going to feel sick. Even if it's a half of a banana or a half of a Lara bar or a Kind bar, a couple of my favorite granola bars, that's okay. As long as it's not an empty stomach will make a big difference. Now, after your workout, if you're an early person and you're working out really early in the morning, after you, you finish your workout, go home and have a big balanced breakfast and think protein because protein after your workout will help replenish your muscle tissue that is lost. So a couple of my favorite um, post-workout snacks here. I love apples with almond butter, oatmeal with fresh fruit, um, whole grain toast, banana and cinnamon, lots of good things there. Before I forget, has anyone ever tried Ezekiel toast or a sprouted toast? A couple of you? Yeah. Good. Supposedly it comes, the recipe is from the Bible, isn't it? It's an ancient bread. Right. That's right, yeah. yeah. Ancient sprouted grains. Is it just in the grocery mm -hmm. store? It's in the freezer section. Okay. It's frozen. Yes. And just on its own, room temperature, not so good. Makes wonderful toast. It makes really good toast. I love it with yeah. like a almond butter and a banana. It's delicious. Yeah. So the difference between sprouted toast, which is what this Ezekiel bread is, and whole grain. So we all know by now that whole grain toast is very, very nutritious. Now sprouted grain is the step above whole grain. That the, when it's sprouted, it means that those grains were soaked, which releases more nutrients and makes those nutrients more bioavailable in your body. So it's even more nutritious than whole grain. As she mentioned, it's not very delicious on its own, but in the toaster with maybe a mashed avocado for some of those heart-healthy omega-3 fats, or some peanut butter, maybe a little bit of banana, cinnamon, that makes a really great breakfast. Makes a great BLT for dinner, too. Oh, that's an option as well. We use the real bacon. Yes, good idea, very good. Okay, so a lot of people ask how much water they should be drinking in a day, and this is something like the fruits and veggies that we know we should be doing better with, but it's something that we struggle with. So, so I recommend half your body weight in ounces divided in half. Half your body weight in half in ounces. So if someone weighed 200 pounds, they should be drinking about 100 ounces a day of water. So it is a lot of water. And everyone always tells me that if they do that, they're going to be running to the bathroom all day. However, it's so, so important. And if you're constantly going to the bathroom, well, I always say that's good because you're getting your, your steps in, which is very important to stay active throughout the day. So try that. It's very important. Yes. I, I just want to say, um, I 
don't drink enough water. And for, uh, for about a month and a half, I was feeling really sick. And I think, oh, what's wrong? I was you know, like procrastinating going to the doctor because I thought, you know, something was seriously wrong. I didn't want to find out. Okay. <laughs> that brilliant thinking. And um, it was water. You were I dehydrated. Just, I, I was really, really dehydrated. So I wasn't thinking clearly. My memories mm -hmm. weren't as good. I couldn't do Sudoku as well. I mean, there's all sorts of ways it was getting in the way. But oh, yeah. It was just water. Your brain's like 60% water. So if you don't, you know, keep your, your brain well hydrated. So if you feel sick, Absolutely. try drinking a lot of water first. Yes, that and also <laughs> fatigue, too. So if you just feel like a lack of energy, a little bit lethargic, like you're just tired, have a glass of water and really try to up your water intake yeah, because it know. makes such a difference. If you don't drink enough water, you love to be awake all night with leg cramps. Oh, that too. That's so that's, that's another that's reason to drink more water. And if you don't drink enough water, you can end up with a kidney stone, oh. which is, trust me. <laughs> you don't want <laughs> that. It's yeah. not fun. Mm -hmm. Now, what about coffee? Oh, hold on one second. I think we have one question. Is it possible to drink too much water? Yes, it is possible, but it's highly unlikely. You would have to drink crazy amounts of water to drink too much and if it is possible because then your nutrients won't be absorbed in your body but i wouldn't even worry about that too much good question now who asked about coffee, coffee tea not good well the technical answer is yes that does count towards your hydration goals i sometimes tell the people that I'm working with that kind of disregard that information because I want them to drink a lot more water. So if you're doing like a herbal tea or black coffee, things that don't have a lot of calories in them, there's not a lot of add-ins, it's okay. It's not, it technically does count towards your hydration goals, but we could all be using more water. One thing that also counts towards your hydration goals too is seltzer water. So if you like, are a fan of seltzer or you're trying to get rid of soda, replacing a soda with a seltzer is a good way to do that because you're still going to get the bubbly carbonation, which can make a big difference. So drink more water. This picture here is one of my favorite flavored waters. Have you guys seen this in the grocery store? It's called Hint Water, and it has just a little hint of the fresh fruit, um, and it's delicious. And no... No sucralose or... No, none of that. It's the natural flavor, which There's is nice. There's so many wonderful flavors of seltzer now. I know. Mm -hmm. The polar oh, seltzer, it's very impressive. Yeah. But I've also done this at home, too, if I just wanted to infuse water just to spice it up a little bit because water can get boring. I'll throw some frozen blueberries or some frozen strawberries and fresh mint in my water, and I'll let that sit in a pitcher overnight, and then the water does start to absorb all of those different flavors, and it's delicious. It's just a nice way to spruce it up a little bit. I also like lemon and lime too. It doesn't. No, no mm -mm. Good question. How about zero water that I drink fairly often? Zero water is it's, that? It's it's well, it's got nothing, no sugar, no salt or anything. I so I avoid anything like that. But I do take it just for energy. Okay. And uh, I usually go through one. One small bottle a day. Is it, I'm not so familiar with it. Is it kind of like a life water or a vitamin water? Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, it's called a zero is the name of the drink that I use. I have to look at that because I'm not. And it, I drink a lemonade flavor, whereas some, you know, it comes in other flavors. Okay. That's not a bad option. It's great that there is nothing added to that. Well, there might be some artificial things in there, so that would be the one thing I would look out for. So look at that ingredient list and see what that what is, what's in there. Right. So if there's like aspartame or artificial colors, I would say yeah. probably not the best bet. You're better off to have, excuse me, regular water with just a little bit of fresh fruit or frozen fruit in there. Okay. But check out that ingredient list. What about smart water? Is that similar to, oh, smart water is the electrolyte water. It, yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. That has, it's regular water, but it just has more electrolytes. Absolutely. That's, I'm glad you brought that up because if a lot of people think that after a workout they need Gatorade or anything like that, which is just packed with sugar, they think that they need the electrolytes, which you really don't need electrolytes unless you're doing marathons or Ironmans crazy workouts like that but if you feel like you are extra dehydrated and you want to hydrate yourself quickly having a smart water is a good way to go good question anything else any other questions about hydration okay so how do we incorporate a healthier lifestyle one of my favorite things to do is a little bit of meal prep so on Saturday or Sunday, when I have an hour or two, I'll take some time to prep a batch of grilled chicken, or I might do crock pot chicken. I might do some roasted veggies and maybe a 
big batch of brown rice. That way I have these things on hand. So if I'm coming home late in the evening and I don't have dinner ready, I can just grab a little bit of everything to make a healthy, complete, balanced meal. I find with a lot of the people that I work with at the Y, doing this will go a long way because when you come home and you're really hungry and you don't have anything prepared, you're more likely to you know, grab the chips and the hummus and sit there and mindlessly eat, which you really want to avoid. So taking a little bit of time to plan your meals ahead will go a long way. Other things that I like to do is make hard boiled eggs or energy bites. Are you guys familiar with the energy bites? So this is a great recipe that I do make frequently. It's oats, peanut butter, a little bit of vanilla extract, honey, and then I might throw some raisins or whatever dried fruit in there. Take all of those ingredients, put them in a bowl, mix everything up and put them into these little bites about this size and then they will stay in my fridge for a good week or so. What's so good about these energy bites is that they are a homemade granola bar. So instead of going to the grocery store and finding a granola bar that has lots of not so good ingredients, you control all these ingredients. Could you say that again? Yeah, so you have rolled oats. I do, you could do peanut butter, you could do almond butter, you could, I do a little bit of honey in there, um, vanilla extract, and then you could do raisins, you could do chocolate chips if you need a little bit of sweetness, not a lot of those, but a little bit. And they're really good. Then they stay in the, your fridge for a while and too. The consistency, you just want something that sort of sticks together. Exactly. And then putting them in the fridge will just kind of solidify them. A really good snack. So a couple of different meal prep ideas. I do recommend trying to get one salad in a day. Maybe this is at lunchtime, maybe this is at dinner. It's just going to help us reach that five servings of veggies a day goal. Always wanna watch out for the high calorie options at salad bars and sit down when you're eating. I often hear that people will be eating and they're standing up and they're talking to their family or they're watching TV and that's not good because it takes your body about 20 minutes to recognize fullness and if you're eating really quickly or you're not paying attention, we don't recognize that we're full so it's more like you're more likely to overeat. So you do want to try to prevent that. There was a comedian um, who said she was going to open up a restaurant for single people and it wasn't going to have tables, it was going to have sinks because so many single people stand up eating in front of yeah, the sink. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that, and that is not a good thing. We really want to try to sit down, be mindful, and enjoy the flavors of your food, which is a definitely easier said than done, especially when everyone is always on the go, but it makes such a difference. Really, really enjoying everything. Yes? How many fruits, I mean vegetables, does a glass of VH juice count for? Oh, that's a good question. I'm sure it would depend on the kind of V8 juice that you're having, but I, I would assume about two servings of veggies. So eight ounces or six ounces? Eight ounces. It yeah. says on the bottle. I think yeah. it, said on, it says on the can or it the does. bottle. Yeah. I think the 11 ounce can is two servings. Oh, the 5.5 ounce? ounce can is one. Okay, so less than that. What's the sodium in there? You can get low sodium. You can't. Mm -hmm. you tasted it? I love it. It's oh. what I drink. Oh, really? The low sodium is fine. Do you know how many grams are in no, milligrams? I'm it out. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'd definitely be cautious of that. The sodium. Good question. Because the regular ones, practice <laughs> <laughs> so another point that I already brought up, but I'm going to say it again because it is really important. You do not want to skip meals ever, especially breakfast. Breakfast is your opportunity at the beginning of the day to start the day off right and to start your metabolism. So if you think about it, if you're going six or seven hours without eating, there's nothing in your body to wake your metabolism up. You want to start your metabolism as soon as you can. So I do recommend trying to eat at least within an hour or so of waking up and think about that big balanced meal that we talked about. So try to get your protein, your healthy carbs, and some sort of fiber, whether, whether it's fruit, veggie, whole grain, whatever it might be. What would be a healthier alternative to no salt rice cakes? Ooh, I might do the Ezekiel bread. Because I, I have peanut butter on a rice cake before I go, to, you know, before I exercise. That's not a bad option by any means. If, no, okay. definitely not. Yeah, mm -hmm. the rice cake is good. If, is it a brown rice rice cake? No, that, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, well but that... It's a no salt cake. That's good. That's good that it's no salt, but I'm sure that they have brown rice ones. Oh, so right. if you like the crunch, just stick with that. I or if you're looking for something a little bit more dense with maybe a little bit more nutrition, I would try that Ezekiel toast. Okay. Any other questions about that? Okay. So one thing 
that I talk about a lot with my clients who are looking to lose weight is my fitness pal is anyone familiar with this app or oh you guys are good so what this does it's an app it's a website where you can actually log your food your it's a food log and it will remind you and warn you if you are eating too much or if you're going you're not eating enough which is something I see frequently as well um, and it, it kind of helps it guides you in the right direction of what you should be eating and how much you should be eating so if we think about the science behind losing weight, it's calories in versus calories out. So if you are trying to lose weight, you have to consume less calories than what you're burning. And this is a fabulous tool to help with that. When I was in college, we did a research study on the best trackers like this out there, and we came, out, came up with that MyFitnessPal was the best one because the database, all foods are in there. It's very helpful in that sense, and it's also really user-friendly. Similar to the Weight Watchers app, I know, I think the Weight Watchers one, you can scan the foods, yeah, the barcode. The barcode thing is wonderful. They have this too. They have that. So I think it's a really great option, something to consider. Yeah, and it's free too, so you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. It just got better. Yes. So this is another great thing about MyFitnessPal is it gives you your macronutrients. So it's important to make sure you're getting enough and not too much of each macronutrient. Macronutrients are carbs, proteins, and fats. So like I said about protein, protein is only 20% of your daily calories. A lot of, like I said, people think that they should be having a lot more than that, only 20%. And 50% carbohydrates, lots and lots of fruits and veggies, and then 30% healthy fats. My fitness pal will guide you in the right direction to make sure that you are getting enough and not too much of this. Because if you have a healthy diet, but it's 75% carbohydrates, that's not really ideal. It's important to get enough of each thing to keep you fuller for longer and to ensure variety. Now is this, what percent of, is it based on calories? Yes. Like 50% of your calories should be coming from carbos? Exactly. Not volume, okay. You got it, that's a great question. So very important to consider that. But this also kind of ties back into the My Plate plan where you have your protein, your carbs, and your fats. So if you're doing that at every meal, let me just go back there so you guys can see the My Plate plan. So if you're doing this at every meal, you are most likely going to already have that 50% carbohydrate, 20% protein, and 30% fat macronutrient ratios. So that's why it's so important to remember this when you're building your meals getting all of those different food groups there. Any questions about that? Okay, back to this. All right, so that's what I had for you guys. I wanted to answer any questions that you had about nutrition, anything along those lines. Ask the nutritionist, yes. What's the best sweetener to use if you shouldn't be using sugar? Mm. If you're diabetic. Mm, yeah. Good question. Very good question. So it's um, Truvia, and I okay. like the taste of it. Truvia is one of the good ones. Truvia, it, stevia. It just, some of them are just all chemicals. Oh yeah, like yeah. Splenda and Sweet and Low, those are all chemicals. You want to stay far away from those. They have aspartame, which is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. But Truvia and, what's the other one, Truvia? Stevia, stevia. yes, I just stevia. said that one. Those ones are derived from a plant, mm -hmm. so less chemicals, a little bit more natural. Okay, so, so the, Truvia is okay. Absolutely, okay. and the taste is a little bit better than yes. the other ones too, which is important. Did you want to comment on the nitrites and nitrates and the, the ham and the bacon and all that tasty stuff? That's a great question. So, <laughs> yes, we do want to stay away from that. One of my favorite brands, if you are looking to have deli meats or things like that in your diet, um, you also want to watch the sodium on those things, too, because they tend to be really high. But Applegate is a great yeah. brand that does not have nitrates or nitrites, and it's just wonderful. The nitrates and the nitrites, the science on it is still evolving but they're leading in the direction that th they're carcinogens and we kind of want to stay away from them so check out um applegate or also trader joe's some of their yeah. store brands yes. will have no nitrates or nitrites which right. is really great yeah. and same with whole foods too whole foods is different in the sense they don't allow anything in their doors that has artificial colors preservatives trans fats nothing which is pretty pretty nice once you go in there you just know it's safe when we first moved here, we hadn't seen one before, and my husband and I have walked in, and my husband looks at me and says, honey, I don't think we belong in here. <laughs> <laughs> it is like a different culture once you go in there. Yeah, that's so funny. But lots of good things in there. 
Um, I noticed in some of your recipes here, using honey mm. to the body. What is the difference, say, between using honey and an unrefined sugar? Yes, well, that's a great question. Honey, I always try to do the raw honey because raw honey is going to be less processed, so it's gonna have more antioxidants, as opposed to refined sugar, which will spike, spike your blood sugar levels up as soon as you are eating it. Something with honey, and it, you always wanna pair something that's high in sugar with something that is high in protein too, to maintain your blood sugar levels. But really, when it comes to honey, raw honey is just gonna have more antioxidants. It's not gonna spike that blood sugar level as much as using a cane sugar. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. What do you think about this ketogenic diet? Are you familiar with it? I am, and I'm not. I feel like for some people it may work, but for most people, sticking to any sort of diet or any sort of restriction is not sustainable, and that sets people up for failure. Um, so I am more into promoting all foods fit. It's just finding what works for you and moderation. And I don't really like how high in fat the diet is because it's a lot of saturated fat is that in that ketogenic diet. And that we know is not good for us. We do. Some part of it, some people say they eat half a stick of butter a day. Oh. That's it's, uh, crazy to me because it's all saturated fat. <laughs> well, grass fed is definitely better, but it's still saturated fat and fat is fat. I mean, saturated fat is fat. You have your unsaturated fats, which is a little bit different because that will raise your good cholesterol and lower your bad ones, but butter is saturated fat. So I could not imagine eating a half a stick of butter in a day. That is just very not healthy. Good question though. Any other questions for me? So I put my con, oh, oh, oh yes. You. Um, when you're looking at salad dressings, you can get like low cal, low fat, regular. Is, is there a better, like is low fat better for you than like low, calorie or good question so I would have to look at the ingredients and the nutrition facts label but I find that most store-bought salad dressings aren't the way to go okay. they tend to have a lot of extra ingredients that you don't need and a lot of saturated so fat making your own is so easy and it's just it's so do you have a good one off the top of your head I usually just do olive oil and lemon juice okay. that's okay. it I have a good one All right. awesome. the boathouse boat they're in boathouse they're in a um, they're in the refrigerated section by the produce at Roach Brothers, okay. and they're made with yogurt. Oh. And they, I was told they have a, a they, they're mm. pretty good in there in the listing of the mm. ingredients. Yeah. So, if you're looking yeah. for a, a bottled dressing. Yes, and also Trader Joe's has their own brand too. The Green Goddess one at Trader Joe's is really good. It's a yogurt base too, and it has lots of good fruits and veggies in there. So it's definitely one of the better ones. But even if you just get a little bit of olive oil, splash a lemon juice in there, throw some fresh herbs if you want to spice it up, um, that's your best bet. Why not vinegar? Oh, vinegar is good too. Okay. I just think of olive oil because it has more nutrition because right. of the healthy fats in there. Done olive oil and vinegar. Oh yeah, that's, okay. that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And then if you're looking for something a little bit more creamy, I would go for those yogurt-based dressings. Really good questions. Yes. If, are you any better off using ground turkey or ground chicken as opposed to the ground beef, or does it matter? Well, it does in terms of what works best for you, but the ground chicken and the ground turkey, it's gonna have, it's gonna have less saturated fat. So if you're really trying to watch your saturated fat level, then I would recommend doing that. But also, and like I said, everyone is so different and what works for you is going to be different than what works for someone else. But I, would, I have ground beef every now and then, about once a month or so, it will have more iron than the turkey or the chicken, and that's just what works for me, so, and I enjoy it too. So it's what works best for you. What if you're in a time buying, you're in a store, you know, is there something you would recommend other than picking up an apple or something that, you know, you're in a convenience store? Yes, that's what a great question. What would you question. recommend just as a tie over? I like a couple different granola bars out there on the market. What, two of my favorites are RX bars, which you can find anywhere. RX? RX, yeah. What I like about these is the ingredient list. You, The ingredient list is right on the front. Very few ingredients. It's like peanuts, other nuts, seeds, egg whites are in there, and they're really delicious too. Okay. Um, so I'm a big fan of those. I also really like Lara bars for the same reason. They have a very short ingredient list. L-A-R-A. Lara bars. Okay. 
Those are very good. Thank you. That's that's because sometimes I'm in a pinch. And oh yeah, and you need something a little bit more than an apple. Absolutely. But for snacks, you do want to try to think about, that's why these bars are so good, because they're a great combination of protein and carbs together. But if you did just have an apple, for instance, maybe, I know Cumberland Farms is really good at this. They have a, like a healthy section, um, and they might have cheese sticks, where you can pair that cheese stick with an apple, and there you're going to get your protein and your carbs. Apple is the carbs. So that makes a great snack. Oh, yeah, like cheese stick. I don't know. Yes, definitely. Do we what is that? Gorp. What's gorp? Trail mix. Trail oh, mix. oh we trail mix. When I was in California, we would go hiking. Is it chocolate? Raisins? Yeah, but it has peanuts. M&Ms. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit of tea and oh. chocolate. Trail mix? If you're making the right trail mix, if you're choosing unsalted nuts, and the, that's fabulous, but you do want to watch the sugar content in that, so maybe really limiting how much chocolate you put in there, but you also really have to stick to the portion size for trail mix. So only about two ounces is the portion, and that is so healthy for you to have you know, an ounce or two of nuts every day. But once you have more than that, it is so many calories, it's a lot of grams of fat, so it's really important to stick to the portion control with that. Um, my husband's addicted to those uh, pretzel sticks. Like, you know, the little skinny things. Oh yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that a bag of those a day is good for him, but <laughs> if, he had, if he had an equal amount of walnuts, What's the trade-off between... So that's a great question. So the walnuts we know are going to have lots of great nutrition, but then if you have a lot of walnuts, that's crazy amounts of calories, right. which isn't good, as opposed to having, it's kind of having empty calories from the pretzels, that's but it's less good. calories. Right. So it's probably not that bad, except for maybe the sodium, but that's the only place he has salt. So. Yeah, and it's, it's just kind of limiting him from having a healthier snack. So yeah. maybe what you could suggest to him is have half of that bag and then pair it with something that's rich in protein, like hummus. Okay. That way it's going to keep him fuller for longer. It, it's going to be a little bit more nutritious than by itself. Okay. Yeah, Try that. Did you mention the kind bar? Did I do like, like, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I do like them yeah, okay. um, a lot. Some of them are high in sugar, so look for the ones that have five grams or less. Okay. Yeah, those are the good ones. Yeah. Um, can you talk about low salt versus no salt products? And, and I'm thinking to the two products that come to mind are um, tomatoes. If you're buying like diced tomatoes, they use a lot of things. Try to look for low salt mm -hmm. or no salt, and also chicken broth. Mm -hmm. If it says no salt, are they allowed to have some in it or? They are. They are allowed to have a little bit in there. Um, unfortunately, the way that the labeling guidelines are, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit to like sat trans fat, for instance. We all know that trans fat's not the best thing for us. And if we look at the nutrition facts label and we see zero grams of trans fat, but then we look in the ingredients on the ingredients and we see partially hydrogenated oil. That's just a fancy term for trans fats. So what does that mean when we see partially hydrogenated oil in the ingredients, but then zero grams of trans fat on the label? It means tiny, tiny amount. exactly. So if it's less than 0.5 grams, they do not have to label it, but it's still in the product. So similar to salt. Okay. Does that answer that? Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, it might be in there in smaller amounts. So if you're really trying to watch that salt intake, you're better off to choose the no salt ones, but just be wary that there might be a little bit in there. Good question. Any other questions for me? <laughs> well, thank you guys very much for having me. Oh, yes. What if you're addicted to brownies? Oh. <laughs> have you ever you seen <laughs> this makes me think of the, the black bean brownies have you ever seen I've those seen them. they are so good I, I, I mean I, I saw them on a show they were making I think, what they making? oh yes black beans oh black beans yes they're really good look up a black bean brownie recipe right. they're delicious I mean you do want to limit the portion of that just like anything else but if you like to have brownies once a week or so you're better better off to choose the ones that have the black beans because you're going to get protein and fiber. Yeah, it's better than Duncan Hines. A hundred percent. So check that out. That's a good nutrition. This is from years ago. Is it a packaged chocolate cake mix with chocolate chips and all you add is a quarter of a cup of water? And a can of pumpkin. 
Oh. It is delicious, but it is cake mix. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking. It's still cake, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So it's a simple recipe and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of ingredients in there, but it's still. All the stuff that's in the cake mix. Exactly. So that's what we got to watch out for. I used to love on Weight Watchers way back. One of the first Weight Watchers is that a can of refried beans and a can of salt and a jar of salsa was Ooh. no points because they used to, if it had a lot of uh, fiber in it, yeah. oh. so I used to eat that. Every that sounds that delicious. But I bet you not so oh, not so they got refried more, beans. No. Yeah, I know. I can't believe that was zero points. It was zero. Wow. It sounds really nutritious. There's definitely a lot of yes. nu nutrients in there. But, mm, but definitely a lot of calories, so you do want to watch that. fat sour cream on a small big potato. Oh. You know what you can do instead of the low fat sour cream is plain Greek yogurt. Yeah. You yes. that? I love and that. White potato, your enemy, if, <laughs> if you eat a small one now. White potatoes, I feel like get a bad reputation, but they are packed with potassium, more potassium than bananas, and there's a lot of nutrients in there. Yep, there's vitamin A in there, lots of good nutrition. Sweet potatoes are a little bit more nutritious in terms of more vitamin A and more vitamin C, but white potatoes, they are better than most people think. Yeah, it's what you do to them that's Exactly. <laughs> so do you do whole, whole fat Greek yogurt or do you do... I like 2%. I feel like I get, it just works for me. It's like that happy medium. It still has not a crazy amount of fat in there, but it's enough to keep me full. Okay. So I'm a fan of that. My contact info is here, so you guys can take a picture of that if you'd like, and feel free to reach out to me with any questions at all. I do work at the Y full time, so I am pretty accessible. And it was great to be here, so thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you.